Hello and welcome to Castle of Horror, the show dedicated to horror movies and awesomeness. This week we continue our series on Edgar Allan Poe movies with the one and only House of Usher from 1960. This is episode 303. Bear in mind, if you haven't seen today's movie, we're going to be talking about it from the perspective of horror fans who have seen it. So warning, spoilers ahead. From Denver, Colorado, I'm your host, Jason Henderson, writer of the upcoming book, The Bookman, coming June 2nd, which is which, as of this recording, is just a few days. So you should be with Day me for tomorrow. the live event. Live event, Tuesday night. I'm going to talk about this book. So be there. I got a video to show. It's going to be fun. All right, with me from Austin is Tony Savaggio, tech director at Rooster Teeth, lead singer and bassist of the band Desert of Mars, and lead guitarist of the band Rise from Fire. Say hello, Tony. Howdy. Howdy. Also in Austin, writer of the long-running underground comic series Halloween Man, Mr. Drew Edwards. Say hello. 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 I'm so glad you guys could make it. Oh, and finally, also in Denver, as always, color commentary for the one and only attorney Julia Guzman of Guzman Immigration of Denver. Say hello. 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 It's been an exciting uh I'll, I'll cut this i was gonna i was gonna tell a, 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 an exciting story but then i realized you might not want me to so so this this is going this is going to be cut don't don't okay. worry I was... <laughs> all right all right okay house of usher house of usher also known as the fall of the house of usher and apparently in some markets as the mysterious house of usher is a 1960 american horror film directed by roger corman and written by richard matheson of all people, the guy who wrote The Legend of Hell House. Uh, it is based on the 1839 short story, The Fall of the House of Usher by Edgar Allan Poe. The film was the first of eight Corman Poe pictures, or as some people call it, A.I. Poe for American International Poe, and stars Vincent Price, Myrna Fahey, Mark Damon, and Harry Ellerby, and that is the entire cast. In 2005, the film was listed with the United States National Film Registry as being deemed culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. And you can get it on DVD. A lot of people rented it on Prime. I've had it on DVD for a thousand years. Uh, I am so excited to talk about this movie. Let's get our opening thoughts. Let's go uh, Julia, Tony, Drew, and then um, I'll go uh, Julia. uh, Opening thoughts, House of Usher. (laughs) I have a lot of thoughts about this film. A lot of thoughts. Um, I found it to be really well done, really interesting and beautiful to look at. Um, I absolutely love that this the soundtrack actually uses <clears throat> the stereotypical, you know, ah, you know that, that whole <laughs> thing that, that like you always think of as being like the back the the soundtrack for a horror movie, but it never really is except for in this movie. Um, yeah. <laughs> And then um, I also was really triggered by it because I am my worst fear is being buried alive. So spoilers, <laughs> that's actually a, a thing that happens in this film. And so I was actually really triggered by that. So it was real horror for me because it was like really playing with uh, my deepest fears. But I thought it was very well done. I love Vincent Price. Um, I just thought it was neat. Um, I've been reading about how some of the, you know, the effects were done and, and it's just, I love that, that Roger Corman just sees his opportunities and goes, Oh, you, there's a barn that's, that's going to be demolished. I, can I, can I burn it down please? Oh, there was a fire in Hollywood Hills. Let's go film right now. I mean, it's like crazy, um, how, how good he is at, at saving money and, you know, t- taking advantage of people's misfortune. But, yeah. um, anyway, but yeah, it was really a uh, good film. I enjoyed it. Excellent. Uh, Mr. Tony, what are your thoughts? I I like this movie. I found myself... I It's not my favorite Poe movie. It's not my favorite Vincent Price movie. I think it's done well, and I like Corman. Maybe it's just my uh, mindset while watching it last night um, with the world being what it is. Um, I found it really... <sighs> I was not as on board with the melodrama. I prefer Vincent Price more. He's so he plays he plays the part really well, but the frail Vincent Price yes. and the amount of just people melodramatically throwing themselves all over the screen constantly. <laughs> and the the constant trope of I can't tell you that, sir. Oh, let me you can't be here. Okay, well, you're here. Oh, and all of it just. <laughs> well, yeah, it's again, infuriating, but it also makes it for the. No, film. and it it's, makes it's more scared. I it's think the it story. Me... No, I, I agree, and it's the story, and I think, um, you know, and I, 
to be honest with you, I was even wary about doing the podcast tonight. Mm. On the one hand, you know, you want to do things and everybody kind of take a break from just everything mm. being everything. On the other hand, I, you know, I always worry are, you know, are you being tone deaf to, to things going on? Oh gosh, yeah, what an I interesting thought. And, and I, I don't know if that played into kind of my being able to really fully take in this movie because it's beautiful to look at and everything. But uh, I didn't enjoy it as much as I had hoped, even though I'd seen it before and, you know, I enjoy the movie. I don't think it's bad, but I, I found it, maybe it's just me finding it hard to concentrate. I think there's a lot of great elements and it's really like a sumptuous looking film. And, you know, although, although maybe, maybe it's just, again, you know, in, in retrospect, maybe it's a metaphor for a lot of things with this crumbling house on fire. I don't know. Jeez. I, I, I think <laughs> but, uh, we'll get into but, uh, this more. And I, I don't know. Um, Hold all of those thoughts because I think we should come back to all of this. Um, sure. Yeah, I'm just I wish I liked it that. more, but I don't know if that's just the time. Like if I'd watched it two weeks ago, would I think differently? Mm. But I, I do really enjoy it. <clears throat> Excellent. Mr. Drew, what about you? Well, first off, yes, it is okay for you to you know take part in activities that you enjoy, even though everything is kind of crazy right now. In fact, I would say it's almost more important to give your brain downtime. Mm. Um, and so like, you know, Tony, you know, like I understand where you're coming from, but I, I, I think you absolutely have to give yourself permission sometimes to, to let yourself be uh, not necessarily with this movie, if this movie wasn't it for you, but like, you know, watching movies sure. and talking about things with your friends and everything and doing a podcast and all that stuff. I think, I think, you know, I've been saying this for months, you know, through, through the pandemic and, and, and into where, wherever we're at now, mm. you know, people, people need to know that there is other things out there other than the, the chaos that seems to be surrounding us. And on that note, um, I, I enjoyed watching this movie a lot. I think, um, like Tony said, it's it's the colors are beautiful. I actually quite like a lot of the melodrama. It, to me, it was a lot like watching like a a play. Um, mm -hmm. and the fact that that it's it's kind of you're you're the, the the way the movie is shot. You're you're only with like so many sets and everything. It does have a very play like feel. I also think Vincent Price is. So we're so used to like the, the Vincent Price with like the mustache and, you know, sort of that Vincent Price, you know, this Vincent Price with like the, the red robe and the very blonde hair and everything yeah. is such a different character in terms of appearance and he's very striking and oh yeah i, I, I thought just... he was very handsome i like him so much more without yeah. the mustache <laughs> <laughs> but you know that stuff you know, to me is cool and, and also um there's a lot here to unpack because you know i i you know i think about you know somebody who is mentally ill i think a lot about what's going on here and this idea that like the the, the sickness of the mind could be passed from generation to generation and you know they talk about it in terms of it being a curse you know that's 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 <laughs> stuff i think that's stuff i th maybe not obsessively the way vincent price does here but it's stuff i think about myself sometimes and i i i find all of that really intriguing stuff and you know what well, well, we can get more into that as we go along but you know interesting ideas in this movie fantastic <laughs> i had some we get to the part about the paintings i did have some ideas on that too yeah no absolutely <laughs> uh and in fact those paintings are are special um so there's there's something about that i um you know i really think that it's worth mentioning it and it, it is throughout this whole quarantine felt very strange and tony this is something that you were talking about you know i don't want to spend too much time on this because somebody listening might not want us to to go on at length but i think just a just a minute or so it has been super strange with us like under quarantine and now with with you know the the ongoing demonstrations that are, that are in, involving you know demonstrations against government violence uh and we're you know we're talking about classic horror movies from the 60s i'm launching a book drew is doing his comics you're making animation you're making music joy is dealing with immigration everything's you know our lives are going on and you can you can kind of it, it feels weird you know, especially if you're lucky, especially if you've been fortunate. So I, I actually don't know the answer to that other than that that's, there's nothing, um, you know, I, I, uh, I, I, 
I know that that's that people like what's the best what's what's the best way to put it? I think it's appropriate Diversions. for people to have an escape. Escape yeah. to have yeah. yeah. I can't think of anything that doesn't feel wrong to me. It feels like the whole reason for the art, you know. And right. um, so I don't want to overemphasize the importance of it or, or make it seem super profound. It might be super profound, but I'm not the guy who could make those profundities clear. But I know that 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 escape is uh, is important. So we're you know somebody last this weekend I remember was uh, uh, super uh, just distressed on Facebook about everything that was going on, and yet reached out and was like, "Hey, I'd like to do some writing. When is the next anthology you're putting together?" In other words, this mm-hmm. one person was like, "I'm going through psychic pain, and also I'm thinking about doing some art." You know, and we're yeah. all you know I'm going through psychic pain, not me personally, but I mean so you know I'm going through psychic pain, but I also have to figure out what to order for dinner or what to make for dinner or you know what to put on pizza you know there's there's just and if you have to if you have kids to get on the ground and play with them and you know it, it's yeah that that's not deep i i just i thought it was you'd brought it up but it isn't it but it is important yeah, yeah yeah i mean that is one of the things i've missed about you know that's been weird for me is you know band for example i can't do that right now yeah and you know that's not a woe is me but there's plenty of people way worse off you know but uh it was you know what i called like i said before volume therapy and yeah uh for those two hours or more that i was just playing loud music and hanging with my bandmates you know but now we have this and that's our that's been our goal for i think for a long time for you know 303 episodes plus (laughs) it's just to get around to usher so yes all right so uh i to to begin with i I think uh it's uh i want to get to the characters but first i just wanted to to talk about um just the style of this film because it is it is striking to me that um, the House of Usher is the first uh, Edgar Allan Poe movie that Roger Corman does. In other words, when we close our eyes and we say, you know, an Edgar Allan Poe movie from American International, we know what that means. And it means, uh, in fact, I'll, I'll call on Julia to, uh, to, to start to extrapolate on it. But we know what it means. And what's interesting is that in this movie, suddenly that came into being without anything ahead of it to kind of kind of light the way uh, it's really really bizarre i mean joy can you can you start to describe the lush appearance of this film well uh, so I, I wasn't clear on how much was you know painting and how much was what like uh like i say they um the the forest the burned the the the, the, the desolation of everything is because uh roger corman managed to find a, a spot where a fire had just happened and he started to film there the next day. But um, the sets are just gorgeous. The costuming is beautiful. Um, and it just has that, yeah, that kind of, it's, it's, it's rich, but also, but also decrepit. Like everything is falling apart. There's, um, you know, things are chandeliers falling down. The banister is rotten. Everything is rotten. And, you know, I was thinking when, when, um, Drew was saying earlier about the hereditary nature of their mental illness. I don't know that that's actually what it is. I think it's that that house ha- is toxic. <laughs> I mean, I think the house, like it could literally be that they have toxins in the house that are making people just go nuts. And certainly for the, in the case of the young woman, the yeah. fact that she gets buried alive, would that be enough to make her go nuts? I, I'm um, not necessarily saying that I, I believe that that's actually what's going on here but yeah I'm saying but i mean you think about it it's a, it's an idea that's put sure. out sure absolutely so but but, but before, so I, I i do want to go after that but but i just but yes to... but the look of it yeah the look of it is that that gothic like it's an just a gorgeous old house that has not been cared for and i think it practically um, defines gothic i mean it yeah. it, it this mm-hmm. this is you know how on tv tropes they have a thing called a trope namer where where if if something is like the original version of something, they're like, this is the trope namer. This is where it comes from. This is the trope namer for gothic horror in film. The color is as rich as it can possibly get. You know, the, the, they dress Vincent Price, whose hair has been turned, has been turned lemon drop yellow in he dresses in these scarlet red bodies, these suits that sort of with these long coats that go practically to his knee. And another one 
that is black, 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 black. And it's just, and there are rich blues and reds and yellows everywhere. It's it's amazing. And it's especially amazing when you think about I can't think of what the hell the model was. You know, like what what when they sat down and said, Hey, let's do House of Usher. In nineteen in nineteen sixty, what what on earth were they copying? Were they copying, you know, I don't know, maybe Dracula, possibly, you know, what like or, or I Frankenstein? Would think that is too, I would think that is almost too recent. Yeah. To you know, for them to copy it. I, I I mean maybe it just was the idea that previously you couldn't do a horror film like this that looked like this up until that point. I mean it's the commonality it has with Hammer because yeah. like the previous sort of quote unquote gothic horror films like like the Universal Dracula and Frankenstein yeah. like those are black and white and they, they could not look like this if they even wanted to, you know? Right. So, and they have, they have a look that's beautiful in their own way, but like, this is like, you talked about like, like that, that robe that he wears, like the, it, it, it's, this is going to sound strange, but it's such a beautiful shade of red. Like it, it, yeah. it, it really just tickles, it tickles the eye, you know? And, and, you know, it, Vincent Price looks He's like elevated by the color, yes. Uh, of it because like his limbs look, he looks almost like Jack Skellington limbs. Like he's got like over long limbs in this robe, and I just, I, I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm digressing a bit, but like, I don't you know. know. You want to talk? No, about this, this is the, this is the, the discussion. Look. I mean, yeah. It, it, I, I don't know what they could be basing it off of, except of maybe like not other horror films. Yeah, you know, like maybe it, they're looking at like Gone with, Gone with the Wind or something like that sure well you're right there's vibrant colors in gone with the wind this technicolor is amazing you know and anna biller in love witch which you guys i know are huge fans of and we haven't done an episode on but came out you know four years ago now uh she copied the you know she sort of cracked the code on how the lighting is done to get the effects that you're seeing here you know with with this like very uniform bright lighting that goes straight at all the actors and it just makes them really pop like this right um i don't know the whole thing it seems to have it seems as though how to make a gothic color po picture seems to have just sprung from the forehead of Roger Corman in 1960 and stuck with him for eight films. And then he sort of sloughs it off and, you know, he shrugs his shoulders and he wanders away and he never goes this way again. Um, but it's, it's wild to me that for this brief period, he invents this look and it becomes not just good for the drive-ins and for low budget pictures, but good for film. And then, uh, and then the, the chapter closes as well. And that's, that's just always been fascinating to me is, is well, that, is that it's this finite time. Well, what's funny too, is you have this, that's just so sumptuous and so technicolor mm -hmm. and eventually reach a point where we think of Poe as, um, you know, kind of black and white Edward Gorey, yeah. Tim Burton, which is, the absolute opposite and also beautiful point. also cool but yeah. the total opposite it's funny to take you know poe so dark so dramatic so melodramatic and then yeah. you go so all the trappings but everything's as bright as hell yeah it is yeah and, isn't that interesting to, to, yeah to basically turn the dark the dark storytelling is offset by everything being the most sumptuous cranked saturation that you could possibly find for some of the darkest material of its time yeah it's it's remarkable i mean i i just i just feel like if you haven't seen i don't feel this way about every movie that we do but i feel like if you haven't seen the house of usher you have to see at least 20 minutes of it just to get this this visual vocabulary into your head and at your fingertips should you ever need it again i i just feel like it's important to add to one's artistic palette uh there, mm -hmm. there's it, it's mind-blowing um anyway so so yes it, it looks amazing and we'll get we'll get back to that the plot by the way is a little more complicated than in the book the story but not by much this is still an extraordinarily simple story and that's why we get to the flaws that we will get to later but tony you hinted at them but basically the story is this um well so the short story goes uh friend of roderick usher from college comes to visit him and discovers that his friend is much uh is is very much in a bad way since he left since he left school 
since our hero last saw him, he's he's kind of falling apart. He's he's dissolute, and his sister is even worse. And then everything that happens in this movie happens. Uh, they the sister appears to die of a stroke. They bury her, and then it appears that she's actually subject to catalepsy, and she comes back to life. And her attack on Roderick triggers the falling apart of the House of Usher. Um, that's it. It's, it's a very sort of allegorical little tale. It's pure mood. There's not much plot. That's, I'm not, and I'm not saying there's no plot. There's plot. It's just, there's, it's a very simple linear plot. This makes it only slightly more complicated. There are four people in this whole movie. So there is, um, what is the name of the, of, of, uh yeah winthrop mark damon's character uh philip winthrop comes to visit in this case he's visiting madeline not roderick he's visiting madeline who is his fiance or his girlfriend or whatever she actually is but he says fiance from college comes to visit hey i don't mean to surprise you i just come to visit my fiance see how she's doing roderick is like uh you know she's not doing no well. way she's bedridden <laughs> yeah but, yes well he gets <laughs> locked at the door the, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. First the butler. The butler's like, like, no, nah, man, we can't no. let you in. Bristol, yeah. Mr. Bristol, but, the butler, Mr. completely. Says, you can't come in. And he's like, oh, no, I'm coming in, dude. Announce me. So then Roderick's like, oh, no, she's bedridden. Go away. Right. And he's like, no, no, I insist. And because nobody really ever puts up a fight about anything in this movie, they're like, Fine. no, he was, so, no, 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 no. Vincent okay. insisted that he leaves, and she shows up and says, oh, that's no. right. Yes, yes, yes. He was not going to. And let he does concede. I, if if uh, if Mark Damone had known, though, that all you need to do to dis- is it Mark to... Damone or is it Mark? Damon, I would think. Damon. Is it Damon? Is it Damon? Yeah, Damon. I apologize. <laughs> Am yeah, I wrong Damon's to say like Damone? Damon. Well, Damon? I mean, it looks like Matt Damon, so I don't know why you'd say yeah, Mark. Yeah, I, I could. I could not. <laughs> not think about Team America every time he was on screen. I guess you're right. Is Mark Damone? <sighs> Damon. Is Mark Damon related to Matt Damon? No, he's not, but it's the same, looks like the same name. So I'm just pronounced. curious. I was just, just curious. if Jason likes to come like... up with exotic pronunciations for names. <laughs> it's, it's pronounced Damu. <laughs> That's <laughs> Damore. It, it reminds me of Brian Regan's thing about how like people pronounce the names weird. Wasn't it's like, there a... It's Wasn't Bio- there a, a singer named Vic Damone? That, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's the way, Wobbler Mangrove. But isn't it, it's, probably, it's probably spelled with an E at the end, isn't it? Maybe, yes. Vic Damone. Yes. Yeah, it's got an E at the end, so it's just Damon. Just yeah, pronounce there's, like there's, there's, it's kind of like <laughs> that, that famous famous author, Peytoon Douglas. Exactly. Mario Camula. All right. Told- I told to the you. listener, just pretend that I went back and re-recorded Mark Damon's name over and over again. <laughs> By the way, we actually did a movie with Mark Damon before. Uh, he was the star of The Devil's Wedding Night. This is that that vampire movie. That's the same guy? Yes. Wow. Yeah. The vampire movie where he played twins. One was good and one was bad. And uh, they have, and he wants to get this special uh, uh, amulet for the Karnstein Institute, which is not a place that you should trust just by its very name. But anyway, wants to get an amulet. It's being held by a vampire. And she like seduces both of them in one night. It was an Elvira movie. Anyway. This is the guy, Mark Damon. So weird. Yep. Uh, I think he's fine. There are writers who have said that Mark Damon is not a spectacular actor. Uh, I, I think he's fine. I mean, this script doesn't really require him to do a great deal. So he's, it's he's just less interesting when you stack him up against everything else that's going on in the movie. You have like yeah. Vincent Price doing his thing. You have creepy Butler. You have yeah. you know the sister. Like they're all weird, and this guy is, you know, very white bread, you know, generic hero type. It's yes. not that he's bad; it's just that he's boring when you compare him to everything else. All right, fair enough. Okay, he does uh, fit in once you have him, you know, throw himself around a lot. Like he's 
<laughs> yes. <clears throat> As everybody yeah. seems to do, except for the butler, who's just the most wishy-washy. No, I can't let... Oh, okay, I guess you're... Gonna... Yes, I, that's don't true. Don't do the thing. Uh, I can't... Uh, it's a secret. <sighs> okay, I'll tell you. Like, <laughs> son of a gun, man. Maybe that's what I was kept king off of. It's everybody's the most wishy-washy. I'm gonna charge in. Oh, I guess I'll go. Where is she? <sighs> I'll go to bed. Like, everybody <laughs> just is... <laughs> Just yeah, flou- like the, you could just you could just term this flouncing in color. Yes, everybody. Every, you're right. Everybody everywhere. just sighs and changes their position. Basically, <laughs> you, you can you can sort of shake shake or yell anybody into changing their mind. In, in this, I'm uh, not in, even yeah. saying that it's necessarily super bad. But sure. if you wanted to redub this flounce, like you could do a supercut of flouncing <laughs> <laughs> from this film, and you it would totally work. Like. Flouncing in color. Ah, ah, ah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. All I know is I was like throwing a major temper tantrum at the point when uh, they started. Not not the beginning. Where, the beginning a little bit. But later on with the whole business of, oh, just leave her. Oh, just let her. Just leave her alone. No, just let her rest. And the poor, poor woman's uh, coffin is, is chained and shackled. I'm like, yes. oh, my God. And then uh, I just that part, I was like freaking out. Well, so before, that, before we get to that, uh, to her burial. So the roles in this film are quite strange. I mean, the way that everybody behaves towards one another. So, so Mark Damon has come to this place to fetch his fiance who wants to take back to Boston, finds out that she's quite ill, but how is she ill? She is, you know, sort of rather wan and tired and and takes to her bed often and is ordered to her bed by her domineering brother. And the brother is... (laughs) I like, just, that you, I like that you call him domineering because this is the least domineering Vincent Price ever. He just kind of flumps into a chair most of the time. Yes, like, I see him he commanding does, her. He does. Yeah, like basically kill her um, almost. Yeah, but he's he's weary. Well, he's he's very weary all the time. And it's like he's always like, no, of course she can't get married. And Damon will be like. But why? And he'll he'll literally sigh, and then he'll be like, "Oh, if I must tell you." And then he still doesn't ever. <laughs> Let's try and work I out. I love exactly. his monologue, though. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, eventually he's like, "Do you really want to know why you shouldn't marry into this family?" And then they go down um, into the crypt, and basically Roderick reveals, "My family is a family made up of thieves and murderers and Satanists and." rapists and well, harlots and, and par- apparently apparently at least one pimp right sure a but, flesh trader and, but and a slave that, trader but before that he talks about all of his maladies at yes length. i can't eat anything more than you know pallid, most pallid mash and, yes and, and this i could hear you from afar your Roll. horse oh and it's maybe and that's another thing i keyed off of and it's part it's it's part of the movie and he play like Vincent Price you put him in this role and he just goes like he yeah he takes it further than a lot of other people would but that's part of it is like seeing Vincent Price where I'm used to like a Dr. Fives yes Vincent Price is one I prefer that's not this this uh character but I, his whole I, thing of like oh <laughs> it's just, oh man that's I a really really good point stuff- I think all that stuff is interesting, though. But I, 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 the fact that he is so completely convinced that he's cursed slash insane slash diseased, right? Is, and I, I, what I think is, is he actually does have some sort of, neur, neur, you know, like 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 obsessive compulsive disorder. What is I think what is actually happening here? But um, you know, because when he talks about the family history, he mentions at least one professional assassin. So if yes. you, have a, yeah. you have a family member who is going around killing people for money, and it's not like this was a, t- a time period where there's like high-tech weapons out the wazoo to like kill people with ease. Like yeah. killing people yeah. have to be pr- pr- much more up close and personal. Um, I don't think they could be as frail as Vincent Price believes he is. He's yes. not actually yeah. frail. By the way, he's not actually frail because there's tons of things that he does in this movie movie that would require it to be physical demanding so for once for once when usually when we're watching these kinds of movies and you know we often talk about what's going on and you know usually you know if there's a question of like is there a curse or isn't there a curse I will be, I will go on the side of we're watching a horror movie so of course there's a curse in this instance 
I do think it's actually all in Vincent Price's head, and he's managed to gaslight his sister and his butler into to joining in on his his mad de- degrading parade but just just yeah. for a moment i want to i want to admire just what a spell vincent price could, like tony was saying about his monologue about everything that's wrong with him is his here is acute hearing and all that stuff it's so effective that you listen to him and you go i don't know if there's a curse on this guy or not but i know that this is a you you believe him that there's something singularly wrong with him but i you're also completely i don't think anybody watching it is not with mark damon and going you know what i think we take madeline and we just get out of here because you my friend this is a this is a bad environment we don't know if he's like suffering from uh you know he could be toxicity is an important point the mold in this place must be crazy i mean you know i'm I'm sure that that there is like there are cancerous levels of mold here, and yeah, you know, I, I'm sure that there is lead. I'm sure that there's all this crap that is probably making them all a little nuts. But uh, yeah, it makes me want to do one of those like commercials for like Usher X. You know, Usher yeah. X may may cause flouncing and uh, acute <laughs> hearing. You may only be able to eat only the most palated of mashes on Usher X. <laughs> Uh, gruel. I believe they call it gruel. Yeah. Well, uh, Price referred to I can only eat the most pallid mash, but then later, a lot of screenplay time is spent thrilling to how much gruel they're going to get Madeline to eat. Because she, um, she didn't even eat the gruel. Like in, in the end, she doesn't even need it. The, the hilarious thing is... Um, and this is a this is a failure, but I mean I don't think there's really much you can do. But Richard Matheson is doing his darn best. But unless you want to introduce a lot of plots that are not part of the original and would feel like like you're really departing, then um, there's not much you can do here. And so the script starts to get pretty repetitive. You kind of feel like every conversation happens like four times before before it the 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 plot like really kicks into a final gear in the last like 10 minutes so yes over and over again i think we should go no i think you should stay over and over um i do want to mention about the family so yes price has his monologue about how awful he is then they go down into the crypt there's two things about the crypt there's two tours of the crypt madeline gives a tour of the crypt to damon and says, uh, uh, hey, check out the crypt, and here are my grandparents and great-grandparents, and here is my coffin and my brother's coffin. And that's the point of the And therefore, the because we have coffins, we will be dying soon. Right. But there's something else that is not spoken in the script, and I'm not certain if it's intended to be. But is but it is this. That's the whole damn family. There are no other grandparents. It's a single incestuous line. That's weird. And and that that's you know, there's one set of grandparents, there's one set of parents, and now there's Roderick and Madeline. That's what I take from that. No, I don't think that's I don't think that's what that is. I think that the parents of the mother are buried elsewhere and then the mother got sucked into this whole mess. But I don't I, think that there's. I don't think it has to be incestuous. I think there's a suggestion of incestuous in, yeah, in the background. The uh, okay. I well, mean that that would account for why the bloodline so dissipated. Yeah, could be. I mean, if royal. It's definitely of the royalty kind of. I think we're supposed to get. I don't know if we're supposed to get it from this, but I, it's implied that a. You know, it seems to be cursed because of how terrible everybody is. But part of that terrible lineage is in the same way that you just had really bad things in in royal families in the past. Yeah, um, they have a reference in the story to the the whole family is in the direct line of descent. Which who knows? It's it's either does mean that literally this is all there is. It's just one straight line. That would be really grody. I mean, that would be like super duper grody and it seems like a bit more shocking than poe or carmen are probably liable to be going for having said that yeah there's there is there's the weirdest slight incestuous obsession going on anyway the point of the scene largely is um she believes that because there's a coffin there she's going to die soon and once again this drives home to us these people are just too far into their own heads i mean if you you ever like run into a friend you haven't seen in a short while and they've just literally gone down the rabbit hole of their own bullshit 
And you're like, no, you, my friend, we need to get in the car and go like, you know, go to the batting cage or like snap out of it, do some woodworking. But that's sort of what's going on. You can see Mark Damon going, no, I'm done. You, this is, <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're too far down. Um, so that's, Did that's the Matt first Damon trip. Mark to, Damon? I think I said Mark Damon. At this okay. point, I could be saying anything. I keep I hearing, in my head, I keep hearing Matt Damon. <laughs> I could be calling him Vic Damone at this point. So it's. <laughs> <laughs> um, I found a picture of Vic Damone. He has this really sweet, like, white turtleneck under a blue uh, jacket. And I'm like, I want that look. It's pretty groovy, but it needs a medallion. So, all right. Uh, second time down in the crowd. I, like, I like that. Like, I, <laughs> how often do you get to say, but it needs a medallion? <laughs> if, you're, if you were Bella Lugosi. A lot. Oh, yes. that's true. Yeah. So uh, the second time they go down and they show up. Actually, I'm sorry. It's not in the crypt. The the There's a painting room. There's a room with all the portraits. I guess it's just the portrait room. You know, whatever. The sets in this thing. This is not an expensive movie, but by God, the sets look great. And there's a portrait room and it's full of these paintings. Um, the paintings are crazy, crazy town. I mean, uh, they're, they're, they're like, yeah, this is, this is the pimp and this is the assassin. And this is the, the, the ship's captain who carried slaves. And, and uh, uh, the paintings themselves are these abstract, just monstrous I, paintings. So, so know? I was <laughs> in my head, just because I thought it would be hilarious and fit into his gaslighting. I also yes. like to believe, I like, I think there's a side story where he's repainted all of these. <laughs> <laughs> and they were, it's all cursed, his own curse. And so, it, it, you know, what the pimp was actually just an accountant, right? And the assassin, <laughs> the assassin was just a normal, you know, hor- yeah. he he ran stables. He had a series of stables and all of these people that he's made up. Well, none what, of I them love were- about, what I love about that idea is that Bristol, uh, the butler is just going, oh my God, why? why no, that's what, that's what I read is like, yeah, I, you know, he, the check's clear. I've been with the family. Yeah. What else? What other family's going to have an usher butler? Like they know, right. they know what I'm like. They're not going to hire me. And so yeah. he's just been dealing with, oh, yes, sir, that is an assassin. Knowing full well that person ran a, a candy shop. Right. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> this whole gaslighting. Oh, I can only eat the most. Look, an assassin. Uh, he was was really a philanthropist. And <laughs> no, an assassin. And he shakes him. And he, and he shakes him in a way that a, a frail person can't shake a person. Oh, but, yeah. Right. But I like the idea, and, he's, and down somewhere in another crypt are all the real paintings, and they look marvelous. And they were painted by, you know, the foremost beloved yeah. painter of the time. And that painter was paid well by the family because they were this really nice family. And since then, <laughs> Roderick's just run rampant through everything. Yes. This is my new one, Sir Lloyd the the Assassin. Do you like it? Yes, sir. He's surely not a candy store owner, and. He was surely an assassin, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you totally changed things. It's not the the real plot, but I kept just coming back to that when he's because each one and he and also he's no longer frail when he's really excited. That's another thing I love. That's like, absolutely right. Yeah, it's been no. well, because again, yeah, it's, I, I I I believe it's all in his. All in oh, his of head. Course. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, like he, he is only shows symptoms because if he was really as frail as he's making out to be, the, the, you know, he, the hero character would just when, when the shit hit the fan would just club his head in and, yeah, right. uh, and you know, take, <laughs> you <true>. know, take, <laughs> take the girl with him, and no one would blame him once he yeah. told him that. Like yeah. what was going on? Because like you know, although that your painting thing does it does hold um it does hold weight because I mean those paintings are in the same style as the stuff that we're supposed to be believing that that Roderick is painting himself. It's a really really good point. They're also if they're paintings of all these people through the generations, they they seem to all be by the same hand because they are. They're all <laughs> painted by one guy, who is like this well known uh, 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 abstract painter in L. A. in the sixties. You right. know, and and so you know they right. they went to him because he could make these really striking weird portraits. 
But what um, a wonderful, like his performance there where he's, and this person, an assassin, and this person, a slave trader. And, but like when he gets worked merchant. up, when he gets worked <laughs> up, he's all of the things we love about Vincent Price. You're exactly and, right. And full on. And it's amazing. Uh, you know, so love, the, but again, because he's gaslighting so much, that's why I turned towards this kind of crazy idea because, you know, he has to convince, like, no, she has to stay here so I can bury her good grief yeah and, but, yeah i mean but uh you know do you see what you're getting into sir yes do you really like yeah if i and he, he's what i don't want to again going back to what you're saying like a sane person would go yeah i know what i'm getting into and i'm getting the hell out of here with her right the hell now yes yes <laughs> assassin Absolutely. lineage or not <laughs> slave merchant or not flesh trader or not you can stay here with your crazy paintings. Right. <laughs> and we're getting the hell out. And I'm going to take her to a doctor, which you are not. Well, I'm so frustrated. <laughs> this is what I mean when I say I start throwing temper tantrums. Because yes. I was so frustrated that It's so he... fun to watch a movie with Julia because she really gets engaged with the, <laughs> the tiny people on the screen. She no, I'm like you know, throwing but... stuff at the TV. <laughs> um, I was so frustrated that he says, okay, we're going to leave. You pack some stuff and I'm going to pack some stuff. I'm like, if he had just stayed with her while she yes, packed stuff, none right. of the rest of the movie would have happened. It would have been fine. But instead, he leaves and then whatever Vincent Price does to her to create, to bring on her 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 coma or whatever the hell it was that she went into. Then I'm mad at the fiance for not, like you say, taking her to the doctor, even if she appears dead, and for not calling the police. Or I guess they yes. can't call, but going and get the police. Whatever. It's like nothing. They do nothing. Well, but I, I also want to crypt. point out that at the point where um, he says, get packed, and he leaves, and then he hears an argument, she has her, her attack. That is literally actually the second time he said, get ready. Cause earlier he said, right. we're going to get out of here today. And then he goes up and she's literally done nothing. It's like telling an eight year old, Hey, listen, you got to go. <laughs> and you go downstairs and you come back up a little bit later. Hey, you ready? They haven't even like put on their shoes yet, or maybe just like one. And they're just staring at the other one, you know? <laughs> and, and, and seriously, that's what she's like. I, I don't I don't know. And it's because of, of Roderick's damn poison family spell. There's something else, by the way, before we get to what happens next after she has her attack, because that's when the plot like really kicks in. But so so as Roderick gives his gloomy tour of the house, <laughs> and by the way, again, I you know, I wouldn't mind going to somebody's gloomy house just to have them sort of glumly give me a tour. But uh they go outside and Roderick goes this is our terrible, terrible yard. And and there's like a, there's a swamp and there's like a bunch of dead trees and no animals. And Oh man, it was, <laughs> you know what you're describing is, this reminds me. So yeah. when we were going, when we were shopping for our first house ever, uh -huh. the, the realtor took us to this place. And what I remember is it said it had a water feature. Uh -huh. I, when we got our second house, we had somebody help stage it. And that was a different thing. This house, I swear to you, look like when you, when you watch a, a action movie or a, a movie that has like, you know, somebody hold up and they're going to go do a heist or commit yes. some kind of terror act or something where there there's no beds there there were pallets on the floor of blankets mm. there were posters of things just on stuff and it i can't believe trying to sell that how the water feature was like a thing that you would probably buy at at a gardening store but uh -huh. didn't work anymore and it just kind of be, the water had become fetid in the back oh my and it Gross. just like everything about it we just looked around and we're like, we we actually stayed longer than we I wish we would have taken pictures. At the time we didn't have phones. But, you know. but <laughs> it was amazing. It really did look like someone is gonna stage something and they're just holed up in this house just long enough to do whatever they yeah. need to do before they leave. It it looked like a squatter's house. So we I bet you could have gotten for a song. The the Oh, oh I mm, no, we no, no, there I'm with you. I'm like with it, you. I've never, like, I'm not especially one to. There was a, there was some bad mojo in the house. Yes. <laughs> we couldn't. Yeah. Ooh, it, mm, it was not good. Yeah, but it I'm a big believer in 
following your gut on stuff like that. <laughs> but so, just so how I would? To... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, but like when you describe, like, oh, here's the swamp and the things like that. Like <laughs> the fact that, that the realtor had to take us to this place and Ugh. they're selling it. So I'm sure we're not the only person going to that house. Ugh. So they have to each time go. You know, they didn't even try to like, hey, excuse that there's just blankets on the floor and it looked like. I mean, we had to notify them, so they had to. They had children. <laughs> that were yeah. living in this sort of squatter's place. And it wasn't even yeah. like it wasn't a bad neighborhood and it wasn't technically a bad house until whatever was going on. But well, it's that's just... one of my favorite things. If you look up online, um, like list unusual real estate listings and it'll be stuff like that where they'll be like, it's a fixer upper. It's a, you know, and they just kind of yeah. all these nice little euphemisms for whatever, like it's cozy or it's whatever. I mean, you can, you can like, cause, no. you can cause a house to fall apart. By through neglect and and through absolutely just so so at, over well, that's what I was on, Mason. I said I wouldn't want a giant house unless I could afford a big staff to take care of it because of stuff like this. Like everything, every little thing has to be dealt with constantly, and even in a regular size house. And so a giant yeah. house like that, if you're not willing to put the work in, it's <laughs> gonna mm -hmm. it's gonna fall apart. Absolutely. I, I I just was remembering that um, on Lake Austin Trail, if you head west from uh, South Congress. You know, you're just following the biking path, like way out there, right? You know, it just circles around. It's like a 12 mile loop. And I remember out there near the power plant, there was a house, small house. Um, and it was overgrown with weeds and just appeared to be, it was as though somebody had decided this house is so close to this power point, power plant that it is poison now. And we're not, it was, it was just weird. It was just this abandoned house, but it was just a rate. And anyway, this, this here, what's going on outside Usher mansion is very, very super strange, like bitter heart. Like, again, this is a horror movie. God knows what's, what if in reality but if if you were to say oh yeah everything in plano has suddenly turned black and all the plants have died and all the animals have run away and there are no birds um you would go well clearly there's been some kind of extraordinary toxic event in plano that has caused us to all go well don't go there anymore you know and and i mean if if the land really did look like this, then you'd be like, well, no wonder there's also been a health effect on the family. You yeah, know, that's what I'm saying. I think there's something toxic in yeah. the house, or maybe like, or yeah, maybe the land everywhere. And so, of course, people are going crazy or like having some kind of. And then you're you gonna know, have fun health, going. Well, what issues. is it? Just imagine that it's like some sort of some sort of cosmically poisonous meteorite has struck or the, or uh, if it were now it'd well, be that, like some that's a, corporation that's leaking story, poison Jason. into the water yes that's true <laughs> the color out of space has landed here and is causing all kinds right. of problems it is yeah. similar yeah yeah they don't get into it they never really do tell us i mean it's Poe. Poe is just painting a picture and saying this land is desolate, blah, blah, blah. In the movie, it becomes super duper de desolate, but it's really just background. Um, Madeline, to be honest with you, Madeline may suffer from fainting spells, but generally speaking, she looks healthy as a horse. I mean, she looks Of fine. course. When she goes, do I look well to you? We're both like, yeah. No, you, you look do. fine. You got like, like, you know, nice plump cheeks. I mean, she looks fine. So well, what know, are you talking about? He won't have a scrawny woman in his house. Oh, I, I love, well, he didn't want her to get scrawny, but she didn't, wasn't scrawny I love yet. it when random, random, like, like weird old fashioned patriarchy, like sneaks into the dialogue with, with you know, no scrawny women in my household. Yeah, I'll see to it that she eats and that she didn't need anything. Like you didn't see to it. You didn't see to it that good, dude. His, his gruel, which appears to <laughs> Um, I had I got to learn what gruel was. I really had no idea what the heck gruel was. Yeah, it's just um, super watery oatmeal, basically. Yeah, it's basically oatmeal. So you know, I like watery oatmeal. Now we know. Uh, mm -hmm. And anyway, so uh, yeah, so that gets to our our fainting spell. He says we're getting out of here. He hears her arguing with her brother, and then she screams. He goes in. And she has had a fainting spell. No, but not and... a fainting spell. It was something else. It's yeah, called, and she appears what to be dead. Yes. What they call it? They call well, it. Well, later they call it catalepsy. Catalepsy. Which is yeah. this? You know, I I don't even know. I, I I'm not a doctor, and I don't know what. No, I saw. Have, but years yeah. ago, I saw. Uh, I think it was Nova. Something about catalepsy mm -hmm. and the various degrees like sometimes it can be innocuous and then mm -hmm. there's some people who uh 
when they get excited, it, it triggers. And I remember seeing, uh, mm. oh no, that's narcolepsy. Sorry. Yeah. That's what I was thinking of. Catalepsy yeah. is like an ex- more extreme form, I guess. And I don't even know if that's still the word that you would use. But right. we need we would need somebody on here who's actually a a doctor to say, oh yeah, no, we we still call it that, or no, we haven't called it that in in seventy five years or, or whatever. But right. regardless, I mean, it seems to be it's still you know you can look it up. It's a seizure. Yeah, that, that she's thing. had a she, she's yeah, had a says, seizure. It, she it looks says, that a, a, the, it. yeah. It says a medical condition ca- characterized by a trance or seizure with a loss of sensation and consciousness. But the problem is, and accompanied by rigidity of the body, the thing is, is that now you would never. Um, assume someone was dead without like she had well hopefully well i mean i suppose some people might but we certainly wouldn't assume that somebody was dead without a doctor or at least a medic calling it you know and being like absolutely not and and, and, yeah go ahead disturbing is roderick's uh fascination with this all has to end yes and it has to oh he's very he's very um he's very much of the uh burn it all down and salt the earth yeah yeah uh, he wants her to die he wants her to die but he wants her to die around him and that's even more disturbing well he Mm -hmm. wants especially wants her to die because she could keep the family line going yeah and you know like you were talking about incest earlier and you know i mean i guess there is a bit of that going on but it's almost like an anti-sex narrative because sex is life and sex is procreation and you know like this is this is so thoroughly about death and the end of this bloodline because this bloodline is tainted and um like and you know like look i mean there and look there isn't there is thought, you know, the amongst you know the scientific community to kind of back that up with mental with with mental illness that it could be, or at least a predisposition towards it can be carried down through heredity. So mm-hmm. you know maybe there is actually something to what he says, but he's taking it a bit a bit far. And... Well, he's so he's so uh, affected by whatever is going on that that. The problem is you can't trust Roderick Usher. This what an absurd thing to say, but true nevertheless. You can't trust <laughs> Roderick Usher to make responsible decisions for the Usher family at this point. I mean, and <laughs> that's borne out by the fact and that we the ones that aren't either. like anything not dramatic anyway. <laughs> right, exactly. Like He's, if well, you want, what is the most dramatic thing that can happen? You can trust Roderick Usher like to a fault. What is the that. most like? Let's we'll throw these things down a well, or <laughs> we must impale one hundred rats, or just whatever the most dramatic thing you could possibly do. We'll can burn down imagine? all the trees in the le- in the area for a mile. That you can trust Roger Usher to do at this point. But I, I would love same if, things. If, definitely not. Yeah. No, he'll do the paintings, you know, or whatever. The <laughs> the and by the way, there was a silent Usher. I just now thought about this where where. Uh, Roderick was a big painter that was that where they, they they he was like an artist and so so oddly enough that one carries through these adaptations but um it'd be interesting if there was yet another character like a member of the family who was just like sardonic and constantly shaking his head and like get an, like another brother well that like, th- then, then this becomes the old dark house oh really see i haven't seen the old dark house is that what? the I know, I know. I tried. I got like 10 minutes into it and I could barely understand what anybody was saying because the print was so bad. And I was, I was just like, I I don't know what's going on. I'm going, I'm going to force that one on you at some point. I love that movie. Um, I know. I know. uh, Uh, Yeah. The, you know, the, the, the idea of like a degenerate family is of course something we see played out a lot through horror fiction yeah i um i think this this one because it's so small it kind of works you know julio is talking about the butler i actually think the butler is a really interesting character because like you know he's he's been there for 60 years like so he's he's basically (laughs) you know been been, you know like like when we were i was watching the movie with jamie and jamie was like why does the butler go along with this is like well this that's the way servants were expected to be like you were you basically went along with with whoever was the wealthy ruling class yeah and 
You know, this character is... You can tell that he knows what he's doing is wrong, but he doesn't know how to resist it. Right. Well, yeah, yeah. even when he's like, I find that he says, is this really... Like, do we really have to do this? Like, you know, is this really necessary? He says to Roderick when when um, when it, when it becomes clear that she's alive, but he's keeping her yeah. buried. Whatever, but he's still not going to go do anything about it. He's like, do we have... Is this really the best way, sir? Yeah, he's just going to go to... You know, to the guy and go, well, sir, Sundays are the days we wear strawberries on our shoes. <laughs> we do not question this. It's, here's your strawberries. Please place them appropriately on your shoes. And you're all just supposed to be like, oh, okay. You know, the check's clear, sir. Absolutely. Please, please just you know, it's nuts, though, because things. this butler is a person. I mean, you know, and so I, it, it, it's... I get that this is just. Say that, but he's had his personhood stripped away from him by these people because, I mean, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Most likely, he's going to have an equally long suffering spouse, probably even a long long suffering Not this guy. He wasn't allowed to have a spouse by Roderick. I guess he he could have had a spouse if it was another servant, but right now there's no servants. Right. Well, there's nobody for miles around this place. So, yeah. I don't think he ever, I don't think Roderick ever, if he ever saw him with a woman, there would be, so, he would do something. He would find some way to go to tear you them know, apart. You're not, mm-hmm. yeah, you're not supposed to have outside contact other than us and these paintings and this weirdo crypt and whatever the hell else we do. Roderick is so He's, self-centered that I doubt he would even, honestly, uh, I'm pretty sure that he wouldn't uh, even, in other words, I don't think he would even notice. That, that's the crazy no, thing. He, would. I, I, he, no, he noticed no, no, everything. Because no. remember, don't forget, he's so, he's so sensitive that he hears and and, and sees and oh. smells everything. So if there was another mm. person in the house, he would hear all that. And would oh, he would, me. you know what he would do? Her perfume, it assaults me. Yeah. <laughs> you make, make her sound... leave immediately i cannot ah oh, the mere smell the sound of her shoes assaults my ears and puts me into a fit <laughs> you must uh, have her totally. send her away and that would be it yeah uh, it, he's in, like in the antithesis of the dude from uh from ready or not like that guy is ready to take take names yeah. and do stuff and they actually weaponize him we were actually Whereas, just talking about ready or not that, that this was a lot like that well this hmm. guy is just there to be as absolutely <laughs> subservient and to the whims of whatever crazy business Roderick has in mind. Remember to the point where he lets him very... be full on, just lets him bury his sister. Yes. Well, you know, Awful. for the greater good, for the, the family is cursed, and I guess you know, if I have to chain up, help you put chains around a coffin and bury your sister. It's alive. <laughs> bury your sister alive. It's what we do. I'll go fix the pallet mash. <laughs> But that's that's how it would work in The Godfather, right? You know, if sure. you're a if you're a soldier, you know, for the Corleones, and they say, "Hey, Fredo's well, how, out," you know, no, you're but let's not pretend Fredo. it's not how it works in real life. It works that way in real life with anybody who's been. Because I mean, honestly, okay, so this is where I get into my. I, I know I sound like a broken record, but when you have a narcissistic person who's in charge of a um, a group of people that people will do stuff that they would not have normally done because they're under the influence of this person. So, I mean, you have cults, you have uh, military, you have businesses, corporations, all kinds of people where like a huge number of people, like there'll be dozens and even maybe hundreds of people doing shit that they never would have thought they would have been capable of before this crazy person in charge, you know, um, <laughs> well, he, you know, that s- yeah. s- tells them to and, and convinces them that this is how it's going to be. He'd be like Kimmy Schmidt. Wait, we don't bury sisters. In- <laughs> wait, wait, right. wait, 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 what? Yes. Wait, you did, huh? No, we don't do that in yeah. anywhere, but that house. Right. Or, wh- what the fuck is wrong with you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I didn't. I mean, I was told and the checks cleared. Like on Thursdays, <laughs> I was allowed meat if I cooked it two miles away. What? So you 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 raise a really good point that we don't really know exactly. You're, you're right. Usher appears to. But one way to think of it is that Usher kills Madeline because he cannot have her for himself. Another well, is he that kill he, her. he try he tries to kill her and then he well, basically yes. makes her go crazy. He tries to kill her, but but uh, another would be that he sincerely wants to prevent passing his because he's he's you know he's deluded and he believes that procreation would pass on the curse and so he wants to stop it and so he's willing to to murder her. But I think either it's all way, of it. I think yeah. it's all of it, and I think part of the 
if I not trying to read too much into it, if you wanted to go with his delusions and the curse, I believe that he probably thinks that the curse also causes him to be infatuated by his sister yeah and that's part of the usher line is this weird line and so that's just part of it i can't have my sister we're better off he's making the decision we're better off with her dead because it will stop this cursed line as well as prevent me from being tempted as well as look at if if this happens to me what will happen to her Mm mm-hmm because he's crazy town. And again, it could be caused by, you know, too much lead and everything or whatever. Yeah. Um, I mean, once that happens, they, the, you know, once they, they bury her, the real horror kicks in. But also the end of the film is nigh. I mean, this is not a very long movie. It's, it's 80 minutes long. And uh, in the middle of a storm that is shaking the foundations of the house and causing rocks to fall and causing, you know, sparks to come out of the fire uh madeline uh, you know rises and comes loaded for bear and looking for roderick and so they they finally fight like a couple of monsters well and you know i mean yeah they have their gargantual battle yes but, uh, but before <laughs> but before that i mean the whole thing is he finally realizes oh crap her brother buried her somewhere and has to find her yes. after having a pretty interestingly uh shot crazy dream sequence well that's true tons of horror movie moans and i mean that thing is is awesome yes yes Somebody's yes really putting it all out there with this you know kind of which leads him to go hey i don't think she's really dead i think mm-hmm. there's something else going on you know he finds her coffin hey this isn't the real coffin um and again the butler you know you want to see the part where he shakes him really a lot maybe yeah. he would have fallen apart and instead of it just falling like, the butler no, the butler gonna... seems legitimately frail like <laughs> like he like like whereas like you know you you feel like with roderick if you say the wrong thing he's just gonna like destroy you with those gigantic hands of his <laughs> um you know the like the the butler the butler like i I don't I mean, know for all man. we know roderick's been poisoning him this whole time which would totally <laughs> make sense like we don't i mean i don't think that's really what's happening but if it if somehow there were notes in a script hey he's, you know this whole time the reason he's so frail is because roderick wants him frail because he's mm. using bully it would make sense as his mo mm. you know? but but yeah i mean it, but he's just so frustrating yes. to watch because you know i mean we're all in on it and so just tell him oh i don't know yes well you know she's around here she is alive where <laughs> Like, <laughs> come on man <laughs> and then when she runs away they see her and she runs off and the butler's like yeah <laughs> there's so well, many hidden passages in, in, you're like no dude yes. go after her <laughs> who cares what the butler's saying right now just run That's he's not going anywhere point. you know right. where to find yeah. him <laughs> oh. yeah i mean it serves oh, the story so but it's still just like the whole third act just had me i'm with yes. julia want to throw things somebody do something yeah <laughs> well i mean it has to some extent because it's a low budget film and again there's only four actors you're gonna have repetition it's going to keep repeating itself because you know there's barely enough story to stretch to an 80 minutes you, you, length. you know though i feel like because this is a story about um obsession and sort of this sort of ocd frame of mind the repetition worked for me in that context Mm. like it's like almost part of the way roderick thinks Mm -hmm. um and and the way anybody who is brought into this house like they have to adopt his mindset right no i can i can see that you're right And, and that it could cause things to be quite dreamy and repetitive yeah and and like i said this is this is really really a favorite movie of mine. Um, so this is well, only a mild critique on my part. That's, well, also that's... you know to kind of to that point, you have a person who who set this whole thing up to work in his favor. Yeah, to prove that the frailty, to prove the curse, and so even when you get somebody new, eventually the longer you stay there, the more likely you are to succumb to this malaise because that's how everything is has been set up. Yeah, I mean that's what he's done to his sister. No, no, you. Yeah. Oh, you're so frail. We well, can't <laughs> yes. help but be frail if all you're fed is gruel and you know, like there's all these things that he's done. Um, 
and you know, over the course yeah, he could of time, be poisoning maybe... her for all we know. Because well, I mean, the I guy mean, said that she was fine when she was at the um, at the party or Boston. wherever they were. Wherever they were. Mm-hmm. It was in Boston. Apparently, she lived in Boston for a while. Yeah, they, I presume they went to college together. I mean, maybe I, that's that. You know, but that's my take on it: is that they were. You know, she went to school. By the way. What an interesting episode that would have been in the life of the ushers where she convinces Roderick, this woman convinces Roderick, I would like to go to the University of Boston by and, and, and he's, you know, can you imagine she'd have to like sneak out basically. It'd be a tremendous failure for her to finally like have to go back. But anyway, uh, so that, that takes us to the end of the house of usher. And by the way, the house I, I have always been struck by, you know, basically um, Winthrop gets out on his own. He's the only one to make it out. And he turns around and watches as the house cracks up and sinks into the swamp, which I just think is delightful. The, the, the notion that this enormous, great house would literally sink like the Titanic. It's amazing. Although, and, you yeah. know, the one I remember actually is the TV one from the 80s, I think it was. With Robert Hayes? I believe so. It's been a long time. It's, I probably, I don't know if I've seen it since then. I might have. Okay. But uh, that's the, the, for some reason, that one stuck in my head. And I realized that that was the one I was thinking of <clears throat> as far as the destruction part. And that this was totally new. And the way they, the way they superimposed the flames, et cetera, on it was, mm. it was new to me because I was thinking of the other one. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So much. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, but, you know, I, I love that when given the chance um, when she's in full freak out mode, mm-hmm. she is terrifying and, you know, has been driven mad by being in the, and that's, oh, I'm with Julia, that part where she wakes up and realizes where she is just. Well, mm, and it's, the, it's mm, unrelenting. Absolutely. It's unrelenting because it happens twice, you know, right. like she, um, she first wakes up and cause it, well, okay. So uh, no, i just, I get so upset. I'm like so upset about this. Mm. Um, they're in the room with her and right. The, the 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 coffin is open and Vincent Price sees that she starts to move so he closes the coffin and then the idiot fiance goes well can't we just look at her one more time and he's like nope I was like okay and then like dude just do whatever you want open the damn coffin so then as soon as they leave she wakes up and screams so the fact they don't even hear her is uh, kind of remarkable and then um he comes back later after he realizes that she might still be alive and it's her her and and the idiot um the uh, butler guy is like no no let her rest in peace don't worry about the fact that it's all padlocked and chained just let it be let just leave it leave it and so he's like no i'm gonna let her i'm gonna open it but she's gone at that point so why why it's chained like i don't know that's all weird and then she is again in another crit like another it's not she hasn't been put in a room someplace she is Mm -hmm. in another coffin in another room and so then once again she's been screaming and like clawing and somehow managed to get out which i'm kind of unclear about how that happened and um the only reason that vincent price lets on is because the screaming is bothering him so much because he's so sensitive um but it's just horrible it's horrible 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 i was like completely losing it and that's why i told you this is real horror because i'm more affected by this than i've been by any of the monster movies that we've seen i'm sorry I really am. Well, when, 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 you know, wasn't being like buried alive one of Poe's biggest fears? Yeah, it's mine too. Well, it's a theme that he comes back to again and again because. So that's, uh, that's a yes. You know, yeah, it would have to be. <laughs> yeah. yeah, a cask of Amontillado includes it, you know, and, and the notion of, yeah, sure. Yeah, the theme itself and themes around it as well, you know, secrets being hidden in the floors that, that betray themselves with noises and, and so forth. You know, this is all this is all Poe stuff. So, you know, yeah, he, he knows he knows what scares you. So this is definitely this is definitely one. Um, but like I say, pretty quickly, she is she is up and at him and there, and and. <laughs> No, it's, pretty quickly after two days. I mean, she has spent the full night in there, plus a couple of days, I think. She's been buried for a long like that, that was definitely enough to make her go mad. She wasn't, because I don't, she wasn't yeah. even close to going mad before. And then she comes out and she's mad. I think that's why. I think that was enough. That's a good point. That's okay. That's an excellent point. 
Uh, so before we wrap up on the House of Usher, are there any, um, you know, I'll go around for final thoughts, but is there anything that we haven't talked about that we should, that we should bring up? Okay. I have a, I have a question. This is from the sublime to the ridiculous. Uh, Vincent Price's hair. What are we looking at? Have they just, have he, they just he, he dyed it. He, he dyed it. Yeah. Blonde. He dyed it. Okay. Uh, blonde. I was yeah. wondering if it was a wig because in half of these poems, no, he, he wears it. Okay. All right. So very good. It's cool. He uh, looks like the best. He looks like the best lead singer of a fictional gothic rock band from like the early eighties. <laughs> yes. I would, yeah. I would go with late seventies. Yeah. Yeah. Either way, either way, like, like, uh, you know, like th- right. this guy, this guy should be hanging out with like Peter Murphy, you know, s- somewhere. Absolutely. And his so, whole, oh, and his whole persona would just be him. Any interviews or anything would just be him like flounced and sprawled into a thing. Like he would flow into a, a booth or a chair. <laughs> And then you'd see him on stage and he would somehow have, it it goes either one of two ways. He's either the person who's that. And then on stage, he's totally the goth version of like Iggy Pop where he's just (laughs) manic or he just hangs on a a microphone. Yes. And then it takes the rest of the band to to kind of mill around him because he's he's immobile other than that. (laughs) You know, surely somewhere. San Diego. This is Asha. Surely then, there is a band, a goth band somewhere named Usher that like 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 a Roderick Usher or House of Usher or something. You would think, boy. Yeah, it's not the world we we have shifted into a timeline that didn't take advantage of that. <laughs> there's there's far more worse things wrong with this timeline at the moment, but uh, that 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 uh, that's still pretty bad. <clears throat> so okay. We should get our final thoughts on House of Usher. Uh, let's see what order we we started with Julia. So it was Julia, uh, Tony, Drew, and then and then I'll go. Uh, Julia. So House of Usher. It sounds like this was very effective in disturbing you. Very and, effective and in disturbing you. me. I thought um, I thought visually it was really neat looking. Um, it, but like I say, it's, it's infuriating and frustrating. But again, I think that was what it was meant to be. Um, so yes, it was effective. I thought Vincent Price was great. Like I say, I really like him without the mustache personally. Um, and, um, yeah, I think it was definitely interesting to explore and a good escape as we were saying to, of, from all the horrors that are going on right now. Um, so I was glad to watch it. I did, you know, um, stay abreast of what was going on and, and participate in my, my own way and, in um, you know, making my voice heard, but I can't, uh, yeah, but you can't cut just, well, I suppose you can, but I don't know that it's healthy to be a hundred percent engaged in, um, in all the conflicts all the time. Mm. So yeah, I'm glad we, I'm glad we talked about this. Mm. Uh, Tony, wh- what are your thoughts? I, again, I, I like this movie. I don't think it's my favorite Vincent Price and I don't think it's my favorite Poe movie, mm-hmm. but again, discussing it, you know, there's lots of, I like the movie. I find it frustrating in parts, but it's that's because of the story. So it's not really a valid criticism. To go, I wish it was another thing. That's kind of dumb. Mm-hmm. Um, but I definitely enjoy the colors, and it's you know it'd make a great. It'd be really easy to make a stage play of it. Um, it did. I know you and I had talked about this kind of Outland meets Vampire Hunter D kind of future version of the story and pitching that and it did make yeah. me kind of want to revisit that because i think a sci-fi you know outer space vampire hunter d version of this would be really interesting you could do a lot with it but it made me it did make me go hey i should jason i should talk about this offline again about pitching that story yeah um you know i have i have ideas now <laughs> that would be i think really cool you're um, talking about usher in space basically <laughs> yeah yeah so. or the way that the way that things are portrayed in the vampire hunter d novels yeah and i mean you and i had talked about it and i really let's yeah there, no there's, there's, there's yeah. stuff that i would like to do that i would like to see and it, it kind of brought that all back to me that kind of creative spark of like ooh, now i see how this could play out and this would be really neat yeah um you know, but yeah, I mean, I, I kind of wish I liked it more, but I like so many bits of it that I still, it's just, I think it's, and it's a, you know, it starts the Poe movie cycle 
Right. So I think yeah. it's kind of necessary to see and to see a different Vincent Price and you know the parts where he's where they're like, okay, now's your time to shine. Uh, you know, all of his monologues are great. I mean, it's Vincent Price. Like how you know the lesser Price movies are still great. Yeah. You know, so you're you you could do a lot worse than spend. 80 minutes with Vincent Price uh, gaslighting everyone around him. I think you said it well, that this one, this one really sets the tone. I mean, this kicks off this series and boy, does it do it right. Yeah. You know, cause if, was, if, yeah. Yeah. And it wasn't until I was talking about it, I realized like what, a, what an interesting choice. Now you would probably color grade um, just everything. Poe would be super muted because that's, that would be what you ex- would expect. Right. You like would, that John you Cusack expect- movie. Or you look, you would expect it to look like the perfect drug Nine Inch Nails video, right? Right. But yeah. instead, you've got this Technicolor. Just everything's a wash. And what an interesting choice to choose such dark material with such vibrant, sumptuous yeah. colors and sets. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it is. A, it is a bold, deliberate choice. We don't know. We will never know how much of that cho- those choices were accident. Um, but boy, they are they well, are wonderful. If we ever no. got to talk to Car- to Corman, if somehow we were able to do that, we should ask him that. Yeah, I actually talked to Corman, uh, but uh, I didn't have the sense to ask him, uh, "Hey, did you make those choices deliberately?" Should have. So that's, uh, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, if we, you know, I would love, you know, something else that'd be interesting is to make a, um, you know, there's color stories and color charts for movies, mm. the palettes and the 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 script color script as they call them to like what yeah what scene we're gonna have what it would be really interesting to see if anyone's dug up one of those for this or created yeah. one just to to kind of throw that out there I'll have, to, yeah. I'll have to look at that i was just looking at one for like the new scooby scooby-doo movie um and they talked a lot about their color choices and that's something you know working for a animation company film company that kind of stuff fascinates me but um it'd be interesting to see one uh, not just for this movie but kind of seeing all of them laid out all eight movies laid out in that script color script form and then seeing the differences yeah. and similarities. That'd be, I think that'd be fascinating. Uh, well, Monsieur Drew, what are your thoughts? Well, I, I, I think this was a, a fun movie to discuss. I guess fun might not be the best word, but uh, I had, I did have fun watching it. I don't know what that says about me. Um, I, I think this is a really interesting and important because it is the first of, of these Corman price Poe pictures. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's a really important horror film and you know, that, that can't be understated. Like, you know, even if this isn't, you know, your favorite, like Tony was saying, like, like this, this deserves to be discussed. Like if you were doing a book about the history of horror movies and you were talking about this particular series, like this is, this is where it all starts. So, you know, in that, that respect, you know, I'm really glad that we discussed it. I also find myself thinking, I think we may, out of all of the quote unquote classic horror actors, I think we may have done more Vincent Price movies than any other ones, like more than Karloff, more than Lugosi, you know, more than the, you know, Lon Chaney Jr., you know, you know, Christopher Lee, Peter Cushing, like any of those guys that would be lumped together. I think I could be wrong, but I think we have done more Vincent Price movies than a lot of these other guys. And so, you know, that may, maybe, you know, what other maybe, Vincent Price movies uh, have we done? I'm having a hard time. Visible Man right. Returns, uh, House of Wax, House of Haunted Hill, uh, wow. both, both Dr. Fibes movies. Um, and I feel like I'm forgetting one. Um, but, you know, a few, a few. And no, that's that's really well said. Yeah. You know, I so I think there's there's something about Price that's always in her. He's a, I think he's a much more versatile and interesting actor than a lot of people. You know, people talk about like the sort of bigness of his mm-hmm. act, acting style, but you if you look at this versus like Prince Prospero from like the last episode and you know Dr. Fibes and you know all these other characters there's there's yeah there's some like through lines in his acting style but you know he he did deliver a lot of different characters and he's never boring yeah like i i no, that's I, true. I, I love Vincent Price you know just such a such a very entertaining actor wow well thank you very much um i have Nothing to add to that. I'm just so happy that we did this. I, I, you know, Tony was talking about various ideas that we were inspired to do with, with Usher. You know, I've been thinking about dealing with Usher for a long time because, and 
when I think of this story, this movie replaces the story in my mind. And the funny thing is, there have been other Usher films. There have been plenty, just like Tony was talking about the, the one in the 80s. You know, there's ones from the 50s. There's two silent movies. There's one in the 80s. There's a bunch of completely forgettable things that we're not even mentioning. Um, this is the one that, you know, that belongs in, in, in people's memories. So I, I'm, I'm just so happy that we had a chance to talk about it. So cool. Um, let's get uh, endorsements. What, uh, uh, so this is an opportunity to talk about whatever you are listening to reading. I know that, that most of us have been sort of obsessively watching the news, but uh, if there's anything else that you would like to talk about, um, let us know. Julia, we'll start with you. Do you have anything to endorse? Honestly, I can't remember. I feel like a few days ago I watched things that were fiction. But as you said, between because I grew up as a NASA kid, uh, and, you know, a few miles away from the Johnson Space Center. <coughs> so I've been obsessed with the, um, the SpaceX the, launch, the, 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 the SpaceX launch. And then today, the, the two astronauts um, boarding the, the space station, uh, in addition, of course, to to watching and um interacting with people who have been at the, in the protests. Um, and so, you know, yeah, I just, I really can't remember what, what I watched a few days ago. Um, but I just did want to say that my, my heart goes out to everyone who is impacted by, by violence of any kind, but particularly having watched um, live feed of one of my friends who's at a Den- the Denver, who's been going to the Denver protest um, and, and witnessing that uh, the police shooting people with, um, with uh, bu- rubber bullets and tear gas who are just silently, you know, just peacefully protesting. That's been on my mind. So I, I'm really having a hard time to uh, thinking of what it is that I watched that, that I enjoyed. I know there have been some things, um yeah. <laughs> I'm sure i'll think of them later and maybe share it next time or post something but um but just right now that's where my heart is so of course but i do appreciate this break thank you uh tony what about you i have a lot of stuff but yeah i mean i'm also with you julia i had a friend today who had rubber bullets shot at her mm-hmm. um i know her i know she's not she would only peacefully protest yeah no my friend was literally just recording and reporting and she got shot with the a bunch of she actually got hit by one but she was picking them up all over the place they were just everywhere my friend also almost got ran over by i think it was an unmarked car while Mm -hmm. she was trying to help some people across the street just all it's It's crazy uh, yeah something else oh being a nasa kid julia have you watched space force yet uh no we were gonna start watching it um we we actually like i said kind of got distracted by watching this the footage of my that my friend was because it was like basically just was glued to her feed for like two hours last night but yes i do want to watch i do want to watch it it looks funny because i i stayed in houston every summer like most summers for a long time so you know i i went out there a lot but i you'll probably get a kick out of it it i'm not sure if it's super great but uh that's not Mm. exactly my thing but when i we started, we watched the first two episodes so far. Um, my thing, I have a few things. Um, I, again, in my kind of trying to keep my headspace somewhat clear, I did buy a fit and a fit of nostalgia, bought a TurboGrafx 16 mini, which mm. is in a long line of these kind of mini consoles that use emulation to do what they do. Uh, you plug it in through HDMI and I can even power it off the, the USB port on my TV. You don't have to even plug it in um, to a socket. It's kind of cool. Uh, so I've been enjoying that. But also, uh, I um, our movie next week is going to be, uh, or for our Hangout, is going to be The Vast of Space, which mm-hmm. is finally on Amazon Prime. Um, I hope you join us for that. I love that movie. I've been waiting since last September for people to see it. Um, if you like X-Files, if you like uh, Outer Limits, if you like radio plays, um, if you're from Texas... <laughs> All, mm-hmm. <laughs> or enjoy things from tech. All these things, like, I was really struck by this movie. Um, I'm sad we didn't get to interview anybody who helped make it. It fell through at Fantastic Fest. Um, but on the same note of Fantastic Fest, um, I would say watch out for things. I got to to watch a bunch of movies last week from the Chattanooga Film Festival, and it was awesome. So if there are other film festivals that are switching to online, um, I suggest looking for those and and joining in if you can. It was like 30 bucks for... 20 something movies and all of these special events that were happening. Uh, Fangoria was there, you know, script writers were there. It was for $30. I just couldn't believe what I was getting. And it gave me that kind of film festival vibe. 
Also, you may see movies that, who knows, again, Fast of Night, for example, I had to wait a year oh, to, to see almost, you know, close to a year. So, you know, this is an opportunity to see these movies that are just coming out. I um, Some of the highlights were the really gory uh, movie, The Skull, or Skull from Brazil. It's over the top, and it's really fantastically full of gleeful kind of 80s style gore. Um, I got... Uh, Attack of the Demons, which is like an animated, uh, the animation style is very similar to kind of South Park. And that was really, really cool. Hilariously, I recommend The Vice Guide to Bigfoot, which is especially the first part, which is just basically like this guy's trying to deal with being a reporter for Vice and not getting what he wants. (laughs) <laughs> and the satire, you know, what they have him do, the satire of that is amazing. Um, but there was there were several just really good. There was a movie called The Antenna from Turkey, which talks a lot of had a lot to do with uh, it was kind of Tetsuo the Iron Man meets Silent Hill. And also about um, technology taking over and government control of the media, uh, which is a big thing in Turkey. And I have friends from Turkey, uh, filmmaker friends from Turkey. And, uh, you know, they did things like <laughs> the government tried to ban YouTube, but then they they screwed up and banned YouTubes. <laughs> So, <laughs> so for a while, when they wanted to ban, like people were like, "Hey, I'm still got shh, don't tell, I still got YouTube, right?" <laughs> um, you know, stuff like that. Uh, there was a film from Japan called Being Natural. Uh, they had a couple of '80s um, movies that are out through Vinegar Syndrome, which again, one of my favorites, Berserker and Hell Riders, which were sleazy. Hell Riders is a little sleazier than I think a lot of people. Uh, probably was was that fun. Is it, is uh it... it's like bikers doing terrible biker things to people. is it an old movie or a new one yeah, yeah it's like 70s 80s i can't remember oh okay all right uh berserker is you know kids go out to camp and this viking warrior uh bear spirit attacks them <laughs> But those can get, you can get those on Vinegar Syndrome if they still have them. But it was cool that they had a presence and they were showing all these, uh, you know, older movies. And this is the Chattanooga Film Festival. Yeah. But if Chattanooga is doing that, I think you'll start to see more film festivals kind of doing this. So again, I'm recommending, you know, looking for those. I posted it on our page, but I'll probably be posting as I find new ones to watch. Mm -hmm. Um, There's a, there's a Japanese film festival or Asian Cinema Film Festival. Uh, I have to look it up. A friend of mine posted. But I think they're going to be doing... Uh, maybe it's Japan Cuts, now that I think about it. Um, I'll, I'll find out. They look like they're pivoting uh, towards uh, online. So, yeah, Japan Cuts. That's right. Uh, they're going to be doing some stuff. So, if they pivot fully to uh, online, and where you can buy a virtual badge, you know, they still call them badges a bit for Chattanooga, but yeah. it was, it was really cool. And I love those film festivals. Um, it was interesting to, to have a different context where you mm-hmm. could watch just on demand whenever, um, given how things are right now, it was really nice to not have to worry like, Oh, am I going to get into the, see this? Somebody was advocating that they liked that kind of, Oh, if you miss it, you don't know if you can see it. I don't personally enjoy that given just things are all over the place. I like being able to compartmentalize if I'm not there at the festival, if I'm there at the festival, it's the experience of it. Right. Um, But they still had the events and everything. So, you know, I, if you can, if, if you're a fan of all of this genre stuff, a lot of film festivals are where you get your genre fix and you might be able to see something new that you may not get to see. I know things that have been at Fantastic Fest that never got a release as far as I know, and they certainly didn't get a U.S. release. Yeah. Um, I know that's kind of long-winded, you know, lots of stuff, but um, that's definitely, until things went super crazy this week, that I was kind of recharged. Like, hey, this is cool. Let me, mm. you know. <laughs> so if anybody else is looking for a place, this this might this might be it for you, um, depending on you know what you want out of things and and, and where your headspace is at. Well, we'll we'll paste we'll we'll post it on the on the the page if you want to send me uh, send me links yeah, if you have them. Yeah. Well, we'll you know I'll, I'll feel free to if I hear of anything new after this, but you know definitely I think I had talked about it on our uh, in our feed and stuff like that. The the movies yeah. I really enjoyed and um, as they're coming out. You know, we hopefully I'd like to reach out to the filmmakers and um, you know, big, on, on Twitter. I was telling like the uh, people who made, you know, Vice Guide to Bigfoot, how, how enjoyable it was and really funny. Ray and I both liked it a lot. So excellent. That's kind of cool. Well, thank you. Um, 
Drew, what about you, sir? Well, first off, um, I'm, I'm not going to do anything self-serving uh, first this week because of the nature <laughs> of everything going going on. Um, I, I will I will get to that towards the end of my endorsements, but I would feel funny going right into it. I'm going to mm-hmm. actually start off with something that would be helping other people. Uh, there is uh, some of you who are in Texas may be already aware of um, Deep Ellum in Dallas was was hit pretty pretty hard during the protests and during some of the the rioting and looting, and a a business that that um, Jamie and I really like up in Dallas is called Dallas Pinup. And it's a clothing boutique slash hair salon slash photography studio. It's all woman owned. It's a co-op. The the women that run it are really great. And they their windows were smashed in. So they're mm-hmm. they're concerned that they're not going to be able to reopen anytime soon. Um, so they have started a GoFundMe um, and I have backed it. I'm putting my money where my mouth is. I backed it earlier today. Um, I will put the link up on the Facebook tomorrow, but I, you know, if, if you want to support some awesome women who are trying to keep a small business going, uh, that appeals to like a cool niche, like this is, you know, just throw five bucks their way, you know, like it's, it's, it's worth it. You know, it's, it's hard enough for women to make it in business without, you know, this kind of thing happening. So I, I, you know, I, it's, it's a, it's a worthwhile cause um so um you know i i've been kind of doing the same you know watching a lot of the same stuff i did finally get around seeing uh one cut of the dead which uh i watched with the joe bob version of it so if you have shutter i highly recommend that you you watch the the one with it it's the the joe bob briggs episode because a lot of his commentary is really cool and in particular at the very end of the episode he has a kind of a speech he gives about independent filmmaking that mm. I think uh, applies to anyone that has made any kind of independent art, not just filmmaking, uh, you know, comics, music, whatever. Like there, there's just a lot that's true. What, what is what he said? But, um, you know, One Cut of the Dead is a great movie. Um, I think you do have to get... If, the first part of the movie, like, you, you're you are not watching the movie you think you're watching. Like, I, I just... Huh. I beg of you, watch 45 minutes yeah. of it, and you're gonna, you're gonna be scratching your head as to why I'm so passionately uh, endorsing this. Okay. But I'm, I'm telling... Because I watched it because Tony pushed for it. Mm-hmm. I watched oh, it yeah. like Tony, yeah. Um, and you know, he kind of said the same thing. He was like, "Go in with an open mind, keep watching." And I, I think you need something that will up. I, the only thing I will say this: as strange as this is going to be sound, a sound when talking about a movie that is about zombies, even though it's not really about zombies, but um, it is a movie that is strangely uplifting. And I think, I think it, that's something a lot of people might need right now. But you're not watching the movie that you're watching. So watch the first 45 minutes and keep watching through the end. And then you will be you will be glad that, that you did. It's, so it's will a, I understand a, what's going on if I just start at 45 minutes? No. <laughs> you have to no. watch the whole movie. <laughs> All it's, right. It's, the, the, the last part of the movie rewards you for watching the first part. Yep. And oh, don't yeah. let anybody spoil anything. You have – just don't read it. Don't Wikipedia it. Don't do okay. anything. Just watch – like it hands down at Fantastic Fest, everyone went. Did you see it? Yeah, did, I almost walked out. You didn't walk out, did you? One person did, and they're like, "Screw you, go back and watch it on the second slot." You didn't see the movie, and then they came back and went, "Holy crap!" Okay, everyone was All right. right. <laughs> it is. Amazing. It is a great. It's a great movie. Um, you know, here's the point where I'm, I'm, I'm going to, you know, I, I will also repeat, I've also been micro dosing episodes of Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated on Netflix. That's been like mm-hmm. my go-to thing when I, I get completely nihilistic and, uh, you know, cynical, like I'm, I, I put that on and it, it legitimately always, always, always makes me laugh. And I'm also astounded at the level of like horror and sci-fi. Like they have Harlan Ellison as a guest star on one episode and they also did a pg rated version of the hills have eyes in another episode that i just watched. yeah 
So, like, you can tell the people are not only giant fans of Scooby-Doo, but you can also tell that, like, the people who worked on it are are real big horror movie buffs. Because, like, there's just so much, so much, not even just horror movies. Like, they did, like, a whole episode that was, like, a labyrinth riff, like, a couple episodes back. You know, like, like just so much stuff. And, again, I always just laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh while watching that show. So that's that's my other continued endorsement from the last, that's carried over from the last one. So he, here's the self-centered part. I told you that I was going to get to that. Um, there is a new Halloween Man comic out. Uh, it's called Halloween Man Blood and Donuts. It's it's out on Comixology. Um, you know, I'm not going to put any pressure on anybody to read and spend money on this kind of thing right now. But if you do have the money and you want to support independent comics, check it out. It's a self-contained, nice little story about vampires and pastries. How can you <laughs> go wrong? Um, anyway, that is that is me for this week. Fabulous. Thank you very much. And, and all of that. All of that was was really wonderful. And actually, you've totally inspired me, at the very least, to check out this Scooby-Doo series that you dig, because that sounds really amazing. And um, I know everybody's been excited about the new movie, but uh, I I want to see this series. That I am I am indifferent to the, the... As far as I'm concerned, there is no way that movie could possibly be as good as this, this cartoon. So... <laughs> All right, and one cut of the dead. I hear you. One and, cut of the and, dead, especially especially with Joe Bob. If you can watch it with Joe Bob, when did he do it? Was it last week? When it when was, was the same week that they did Trauma's War. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I, second, that's so funny. Second. I was so like not interested in that 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 I just did other stuff that night. And and also, I mean, you know, honestly, Julia and I usually Friday night we usually watch something much more like prosaic. So so um, although I often do for sort of watch Joe Bob. So yeah, know, we watched we watched it this last week, didn't we? What was it? Uh, no, Maybe? we did not. Because it was the, my, it was uh, it oh was, well then uh, week before then it was last, cannibal, cannibal holocaust cannibal holocaust <laughs> okay then last week is when we watched it one yeah, of these weeks we watched it so. last week and I was totally interested in Dead Heat but we we were watching other stuff so but Dead uh, Heat is not up, Dead Heat is not up on on Shutter yet I I, I really want to wa- I really want to watch that one like I guess they had it live stream but like they haven't put it back up they they haven't put it back up as like where you can go back and rewatch it um, that's really super strange. My favorite thing about Joe Bob, you know, since mm-hmm. he's come back, my favorite exchange, because, you know, Jamie legitimately did not really know who he was. And I remember I was watching one of the, the episodes of the, the, you know, the, from the first season when he came back mm-hmm. and she came into the room and watched it. And she was like, OK, what is this you're watching? I was like, oh, this is Joe Bob Briggs. He's a horror host and is a film critic. And I explained to him, she was like. I instantly feel like I understand everything about you as like, <laughs> like, like, like based <laughs> off of five minutes of watching this, this person. It's <laughs> so. interesting. Wow. Yeah. How cool is that? So Joe Bob yeah. brought you two closer together. I think yeah. That's the life. We've met Joe Bob. Remember we, yes. we, we hung out with him at the, at the Colorado horror festival which sounds much bigger than, than uh, no disrespect, but I mean, it was the first year of that show and the, and it was not heavily attended. So yeah, we hung out with him in the lobby of the Marriott or whatever that was. So, um, man, I hope they do that again. I would love to have another, well, after the quarantine is over and we're back doing cons, but whatever. Con! Um, Sorry. Please, please. Yes, indeed. Uh, all right. So uh, my endorsement actually is completely self-serving, which is that I have an event on Tuesday. So I, I think if you're listening to this, you should totally go. I'm going to try and keep it like just a half an hour. Um, and it is uh, in the evening. You can go to the Facebook page and find out. But it is the Gidget uh, meets Stephen King book that I've been doing, which is called The Bookman. And we're doing an event called the Bookman Virtual Haunted Beach Party. And I'll be doing a, a short video just about the world of the bookman, the things that that went into this uh, story, and and uh, you know why I've done it, and taking questions. And I expect you guys, if you can be there, to be there and ask me questions, just in case nobody else wants to ask me questions. So um, yeah, and you, the listener, I hope you can you can make it. And also, the bookman comes out on Tuesday too. So so order and ask me questions. That's it. 
that's all I have. I am so thankful. Thank you guys for taking the time out. I, I know that it can be really, really rough to like peel your eyes away from the emergencies and, and, and watch the stuff, but you know, it keep it, it keeps us sane and, and to the listener, I hope it keeps you sane too. Everybody stay safe. Thank you guys. Have a lovely evening. Night. Night. Good night.